Welcome to the Prada Museum in Madrid, Spain. We're here for another of our weekly sessions in English, brought to you with the help of the members of the American Friends of the Prada Museum. You can see that today we're in a space that's a little bit different than the rest of the galleries. The lights are a little bit lower, the paintings are hung a little bit differently, and the architecture is a little bit unique here. And that's because this space, this gallery, recreates a medieval chapel, San Baudelio de Berlanga. San Baudelio is in Soria in northern Spain, and it is a, a relatively small chapel with thick walls and small windows and this simple austere exterior that in no way would prepare you for the marvelous 12th century frescoes and the unique architecture that you would find inside. So today we're going to see just a bit of the of the frescoes, of the paintings from San Baudelio. And when we look at them, we're going to be thinking a little bit about what they can tell us about the function of images of painting in religious settings in 12th century Spain. San Baudelio is a Mozarabic chapel. Mozarabic is the term that refers to Christians living in Islamic territory in Spain. And it's extended to apply to all of the artistic and architectural styles inspired by Islamic culture. And one of the first things that really catches your attention when you're in this room is this unique architecture. We have this central column, this enormous pillar that's right in the middle. And if you look at the top, it looks like it would have had these, um, these ribs that come out like branches, almost as if this were like a palm tree. And the branches would extend to serve as a support for the vaulted ceiling. Now, a ribbed vault would have also been inspired by the architecture in Andalusia in southern Spain. The painting of this time is, generally speaking, stylized, flat, frontal, and we have six fragments here at the Prado, so we're going to see some of the examples. Here we have a few hunting scenes. This is a monk, and he's hunting a deer. It might seem strange to, to include hunting scenes in a religious setting to us today. These images don't seem like they tell any biblical story like we expect them to do. Here we have a monk that's on a horse and he's following dogs that are hunting rabbits. But then again, these, these animals likely held symbolic content. The scene of the rabbit hunt actually looks strangely like another scene that's very similar in the Bayou Tapestry. And as a fun fact, on the head of the lower rabbit, there's actually a bit of graffiti. Around the year 1200, someone wrote, Mingo Pedret Mefekit, or in today's terms, Mingo made me, or basically, Mingo was here. And then we have some images of animals. Here we have a bear. Bears were usually associated with evil. And they're typical in religious settings to be depicted with a man near a man who is in charge of taking them down. And that's not the case here. The bear's on his own. But there is a soldier who is standing very nearby. So this maybe is related to the image of the bear. The soldier has kind of a dynamic attitude if you look at him because he's holding this sword and this shield. But notice how the artist suggests movement with his tunic. And also this turn of his foot towards us and this early attempt at foreshortening is really, really great. He's actually crossing the threshold of the space that's holding him in. And next to him we have an elephant, another animal that's actually associated with Christ, and particularly with Christ, uh, with Christ's quality of humility. The elephant is carrying a castle on his back, which um, a medieval text called the Physiologus tells us represents suffering and sicknesses of mankind. And if we come to the other side, we'll see um, another great example of, well, another great painting here from San Baudelio that uh, is of a curtain or an Islamic textile. Here we can see these geometric shapes. These, this repetition of geometric shapes reminds us of Islamic textiles in the medieval time. And inside each one of them, there is an eagle. 
And the eagle would have been a reference to Christ. Again, in the same text, the Physiologus eagles are explained to be a sign of Christ because of how high they could fly. Now, in the beginning of the 20th century, chapels like this started to gain historic interest, artistic interest. And the paintings were extracted, and they were taken to a bunch of different museums. Um, and most of them ended up in between the Met Cloisters, the Indianapolis Art Museum, Museum in Boston, and Cincinnati. And then in 1957, um, the Prado hoped to get some of these back to be able to show some of the San Baudelio paintings here. And so the government came to an agreement with the Met Cloisters that they would bring six of the paintings here in exchange for the relocation of the apse of San Martin of Fuente Dueña being relocated to the Met Cloisters where it remains today. And so here we can see this fantastic recreation of what is inside San Baudelio. Um, now the other museums would have had um, these other scenes, well, many of them, but these other scenes that are uh, scenes of the New Testament, of Christ's life and death. The ones that we have here in the Prado are here, are this section. Now it's likely that these two different spaces, we can see that there's an upper area and a lower area, would have been designated for uh, different people to use them. Here we can also see again the differentiation between the two spaces in San Baudelio today. It's likely that monks would have been in the upper area with the New Testament paintings and the lay, lay people would have been below. And this actually makes a really interesting read on the animals that surround the space for the lay people. On the one hand, it's probable that with these images, the patron who was a nobleman from Aragon, Fortunio Aznares, wanted to show images of his triumphs in battles with Muslims. Many of the animals that were depicted in the chapel, if we notice, are exotic. We have an elephant. Um, there's a camel in the Met as well. And it's true that possessions um, or things that represent a defeated enemy is a classic way to show triumph. But there are other possible readings um, of this differentiation of space. Jean, Mol Jean Molina, who is the curator of this collection, um, likes to point out that it can't be coincidental that the lower area dedicated to the lay spectators actually has these hunting scenes and animal scenes. And this puts people in direct contact with a different, exotic, exciting, luxurious reality that recalls the Eastern world. In the same way that Gothic churches provide uh, the experience of being in a celestial paradise reaching unthinkable heights and with light bathing in through enormous windows representing divinity, uh, providing the experience of being in that celestial paradise, uh, this space can also transport you to another strange, far off place, and maybe even one of pilgrimage. We can't forget that this is also the time of the Crusades. So the experience to a worshiper in San Baudelio might have been one kind of like a mental pilgrimage to the Holy Land, with these images kind of taking you there virtually. So in any case, what we can take from thinking about these images is the function of images in religious settings in 12th century Spain and thinking how they don't only have a moralizing message, but not just a way to connect with the divine, uh, not only didactic purposes, but also they can broaden the mind, lead the, the people to imagine, and also connect with other earthly experiences. And with that, we'll end for today, and I hope that you'll join us again next week for more conversations in English.